if you're taking growth hormone for a long period of time and you're doing bodybuilding dosages between you know four to eight I use depending on how big you are, okay? You still start off with the lower side of the dosaging and then increase as you need to until you get to the highest level, which if you're starting off, uh, you know, at you know two I use starting, you're gonna, if you're getting all the way up to the point where you're taking eight I use in your bodybuilding career, it may be like, you know, three years, four years into your career uh, of, of using GH on, and if you're not off, you know, back down to two I use a day and then up to four or six and then, you know, down to two I use for a few months at a time and then back up to, to six. The reason you don't want you need you back you back off and go down to two I use is because it stops really working that well at four I use and, or you need insulin or something like that. That's the perfect time to chill out on it. And then it works just as good when you come back on it. If you don't do that, you're, you're, you're stuck and you have to end up taking more. And then when you take more, you have to take insulin. So you, you're forcing diabetes on yourself from too much GH. And it's not even like the GH is building muscle. Take it from me, guys. I know. I have the growth hormone. I just showed you 36 I use. If it really made me bigger, I would take the whole thing at once. I guarantee you it doesn't. So just a word of wisdom from somebody who's been there, had as much GH as I've ever wanted, and I still know that it's not something you want to take a lot of. Can you get bigger if you take more dosages? Yes. But what happens is the muscle starts to blur, and the areas of the human body where it's not reinforced with bone, like the abdominal area, has a tendency to start growing more out of control because there's nothing really keeping it confined, like bone. There's, there, there's not the type of insertions that you have that are tightly bound from one point to the muscle into the tendon, to other point to the muscle into the tendon, and then going into bone or something else, you have insertions. In the abdomen area, you have it going up into your rib cage and then going down into your pelvis. And the whole area is meant to be like an accordion where it can come in and out. So there's a lot of room inside here for organ growth, and the organ growth is not bound by fibrous tissue. The organ growth is soft tissue and there are no strands of fiber like we have in the muscle which look like threads. There are no strands binding the organs together. It's like you can cut open a kidney and you won't see muscle fibers in it. The muscle fibers are distinct to skeletal muscle tissue. Organs don't have that. GH, HGH doesn't differentiate. It makes everything grow. So if it makes everything grow, your best bet is to work hard train hard, have the muscle grow from the HGH, have it help you recover from the HGH, but don't take so much that it dis distorts your symmetry. If you just put a little bit of, of, of uh, size on your waist, you'd be surprised, but you just can't make it up in the shoulders. And so then what do bodybuilders do? They put synthol on the shoulders. Hey, here's a tip. Don't take so much GH. Your stomach won't get that big. You'll be able to do a vacuum pose. You'll beat half the people because you have a small waist. And guess what? You won't have to use any synth on your shoulders. And you may still have striated delts when you twist and you pose your shoulders. Instead of when you flex and do a most muscular, you, you see the, the something lumpy sticking out. You don't need that just to keep your symmetry good when all you had to do is just not take so much growth. And so when you think about the mentality that we have, when you know this and you still take too much growth, when you're seeing your midsection get bigger and you know that the only time your midsection is tight is when you flex your abs and you're in a pose. And literally the minute you let go of pose, the stomach comes out like this and it's because you can't breathe and keep your midsection tight because it's just too laborious on you keeping all your organs in. This isn't beneficial and it makes your symmetry ruined to the point that a guy who has a naturally small waist and has no distension, maybe he's taking less drugs than you, it'll be apparent in his physique. He doesn't need the synthol, his still body's still harder and probably not as abused because somebody that resorts to that level of HGH more than likely has lost the reality and lost their self-esteem to where they're taking that much because they see their stomach growing and they see the muscles blurring, but they continue on. It's like it's like getting gyno two weeks to three weeks into your cycle and not stopping. You know, uh, you just got to keep. You see it there. You know it hurts, and you, you you touch it or whatever, and you know it's there. And you know, and, and then it says week four, you got to take you know eight hundred milligrams instead of stopping. They go ahead and up it up, up it up. Take eight hundred, take whatever, and then oh, you know, I'll take letrozole and keep increasing the dose. 
No, you got to stop the shit and take the Letro. You don't just keep upping it up and think that the other drug is going to combat it. So HGH is the same thing. It, it can be abused so easily because it doesn't hurt like taking steroids or taking like three cc's in the glued at, glued at once. It's just this little bit of water. You hardly even feel it. And these are the drugs that are the most dangerous because you don't see the negative side effects right away. It's months. It takes months of use before, a heavy usage before you see negative side effects. At what point in your career in bodybuilding should you start taking HGH? You know, it, 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 it's hard It's hard to say. I mean, it's not like you could say that you should wait a few years before trying HGH. I know a lot of people may say, you know, well, I mean, I, I thought you were very conservative, and I am. What I think is conservative is the dosage, not when you started. I mean, you could be 19 years old. And if your if your bones, if, if maybe if your bones aren't sealed, maybe you want to grow taller from it. I mean, if you take HGH when you're 15 years old, the chances are you could grow, either you could get some height out of it. You also got to make sure your bones don't grow in an irregular fashion. But it, it really depends on what you want to get out of it. I don't personally see anything wrong with using HGH and, and even as a novice in, in bodybuilding. Um, as far as health and longevity goes outside of bodybuilding, I don't think you should take it until you're like 35 or 40. But if you're doing it for bodybuilding in low dosages, I don't really see uh, it being negative until you start taking higher dosages. I start to see slight negative effects in over four I use. And then oh, between four and eight, it starts to gradually increase to eight. And then over eight to, to more than eight, the, I, the, the, the negative results come fast. Fluid retention that just keeps building upon building, and it, it, it never seems to subside. And then that fluid retention kind of morphs into the tissue itself, the the, the threads of fiber becoming instead of like a a, a thread of, of of a you know string uh, that you sew your clothes with. It's more like a, a piece of yarn or something. Like it's a it's a little thicker. And so then multiple tissues start to spread out like that and become from one thread into thicker. And then you the muscle itself loses. The, the appearance of having the striated fine lines, it becomes a larger overall large piece without the fine lines in it. And then when they get hard, the, the skin is tight against the muscle. Instead of it having the fingery look that you see, you just see like big hard muscle and no like striation in the bicep or striations in the delt like uh, used to be back in the day before so much HGH and insulin was used. GHGH works great uh, every other day in higher dosages to build muscle. I still say eight is good enough, but you know some people want to go higher. That's their prerogative. The higher you go and the more frequently you take it, the bigger your waist can get. So those are the, the kind of setbacks. And some of the smaller guys, like myself, that's all we have is a small waist. If we don't have that to our advantage, then we're, we're not going to win. So the minute you start thinking, okay, well, uh, for someone like my frame, well, I could just take enough GH and be a light heavy. Well, yeah, I can. I could take enough drugs and be a light heavy, but will I be a good one or what will happen? I already know I've seen it happen where I've taken a little, a little bit more growth than what I know now to be is the accurate dosage for my body. And I could see that day or two or three days that I did it. If I would push it, yes, my body got bigger, but yes, my waist did get wider and the trade off in symmetry, it wasn't worth it. I could see there was an end to this, but there was no end to the way the waist could get bigger. It could keep growing, growing. So in retrospect, I decided that a lower dose is better for me. And then when I noticed that I start to get some distension, especially now getting ready for the competition, I'll simply stop for two days. And it ends up being that I usually stop for two days after one of those is done. So for every 36 I use that I do uh, every day, except on non-training days, I don't take it on days I don't train. I do in the evening, but not during the day. Then I find that I need I, I need about two days off. So for every 36 I use, I take two days off, and I find that that keeps me within the 4IU range and it being beneficial to me without having to take more and not getting the benefits of getting a, of a low dose.